Hello everyone, we're live again today. We will be talking about addictions. Anyone who'd like to, um, anyone who's interested in the topic can come and listen in. I'm going to invite Dr. Satyain, our guest, and there you go. Hello, Priya. Hello. Hello, Joshna. Talking about addiction with Dr. Satyain today. There you go. First. We there you go. Okay. I think we're live. So Dean, I've invited you. you. Just have to accept my request, and then you can come online. I'm going to invite you one more time. Uh. Let's see. We're just waiting for our guest to come online. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good, Deepak. How are you doing? I'm not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So thank you, first of all. Thank you very much for joining in. I'm really excited to talk about this topic because I think a lot of people are dealing with addictions and a lot of people are dealing with substance use during the pandemic. Um, so today, just for everyone to know, we will be talking a lot about substance use. We'll be talking about, um, you know, there, there could be some triggering points here. So yeah. I just advise people that if you're triggered by anything that we are saying, you can take a little break, you can do whatever you want to do and sort of recompose yourself and come back if you need to or not, if, if that is something that you need for your uh, yeah. mental health. So I'm going to let Dr. Satyan in, introduce himself, and then I will ask him questions, and we are going to be taking questions from other people as well. So Dr. Satyan, the right. floor is yours. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you, Deepak. Uh, firstly, I am so thrilled to be here. You know, it's it's a topic very close to my heart. Uh, after I did my post-graduation in psychiatry, well, I, I did my graduation from AFMC Pune, uh, and then my PG from uh, uh, Nagpur. My teacher was Dr. Sudhir Bhave there, who taught me the basics of uh, psychiatry, and I'll always look at him as an inspiration and somebody who's taught me so much about life, more important about life outside the books, right? So. And after that, I came back to Punjab. Uh, as you know, Deepak, I'm a, I'm a second generation psychiatrist. My father is also in the same field. And uh, uh, for now, more than a decade, almost, I think, 13 years, I've worked in Punjab. And unfortunately, every psychiatrist who works in Punjab has to see a lot of substance abuse cases. Plus, uh, we, we, we have been describing it as, as epidemic proportions of opiate uh, abuse in Punjab, right? And uh, so that has been my field uh, for the past more than a decade. And, and uh, I would say it has, it has humbled me as, as a person. It has taught me a lot of things. It has taken my cockiness down several notches because, you know, once you are a doctor, you tend to... Uh, have these airs about you around you that you know you can possibly do a lot and then right. you you work with a subject like this you work with families and you realize how 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 important having the right attitude towards what you are doing is and i have no shame in saying that i have been schooled in more than a decade now i have been schooled into getting the right thought process to this very important and exceptionally misunderstood topic of addictions right in fact i mean when you when yes, you talk really about uh, triggers you, you, 
Yeah, this yeah. is really great that you're talking about it in such human terms, and not in yeah. terms of like I am the doctor, I will solve your problems. Come to me. It's like, mm. hey, I had to learn a lot about this while I was doing it, as well. Yeah. So that's that's really, really, yeah. really uh, interesting. Yes. Yes, and uh, Deepak, uh, you do know that uh, you know when, when we talk. Oh, just just uh, to get this thing clear, uh, are we going to be talking in English exclusively, or can no, we do no, a little no. bit of in the Hindi? But we're going to right. have to make sure that we're able to say our entire thought in English before we come to, because we have a lot of people joining from Canada. We have a lot of people sure. joining from the UK and India. I'm not sure about sure. America yet, but we have jo people joining us in three countries. excellent so so i will uh, th there are some some uh, emotions which can be best uh, expressed in vernacular to wo hindi mein bole jayenge and shayad punjabi if i can if i can do justice to the translation <laughs> oh sure 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 uh, that would be great yes uh, as as uh, people working with the human mind i'm sure we like to challenge ourselves all the time you know to do something more interesting <laughs> something a little right Absolutely. and i've seen the the amount of work you've been doing is phenomenal you know the oh, amount of public so information you know the amount of uh, reaching out you do i i do feel that as professionals we talk a little too much amongst ourselves and not enough with people who need to know right, right so so right. this is refreshing and these these new mediums have come up it's 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 fantastic it's fantastic so as 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 we were talking about about humanizing the entire thing you know many a times a young person is brought to me by the parents by the very concerned families and he's sat down in front of me and told doctor sab iska nasha chhodwa do you know it's very simple they said doc help him quit his this habit we are fed up of him we are fed up of his habit and you know i'm sure by the time they come to me they've gone through the entire ring and roll the revolving door of addictions and unfortunately for us you know even though we are a big country even though we have a massive amount of life which are lost because of substances we have a lot of man hours which are lost because of substances we have a lot of pain which is created because of substances we still do not have a clear cut national policy as to how we are going to address it yeah, it's only looked at as a moral failing and not as a mental health issue and that Absolutely. is that is problematic as well i want to i want to sort of talk about the whole country and i don't want to focus on punjab but it's a very interesting thing as to have do you do you know why punjab in particular suffers from addictions as much and then we can come back to just general questions but do you have any idea right. why punjab in particular has that problem? yes well there are there are, i have my theories plus i have okay. uh, uh you know I, i i have a very close friend one of the finest minds in neurosciences in india dr bhaskar mukherjee and he is a very i would say hardcore biological psychiatrist right so he he says that all behavior is biology completely so let's look at everything from a very genetic perspective when when we talk about substances when we talk about you know uh, these three plants right which which humans grew up next to Uh, the most commonly abused are the three plants plus alcohol and alcohol we can create out of anything any organic matter we have been able to create alcohol out of right so alcohol plus cannabis indica and sativa plus uh, the opium plant plus the cocoa plant so these three plants cannabis opium and cocoa human kind has grown next to them so you will find that people in south america are more prone to taking cocaine as the drug of you know choice you know as the drug of now what we call abuse and addiction but you know if we look at before the entire un convention on drugs you know and if i if i if i may use the term with absolutely no disrespect but if we look at it very objectively and the way it has affected our laws and and the implementation of them i like to use this term again with all reverence and no uh, disrespect yeah. but yeah. with a with a understanding that it is happening because of this i use the term christian guilt 
you do understand that the bible does have a very strong influence on how we run our addiction policy today oh yeah absolutely you know? i mean right. a bible and, bible that way has a lot of influence on our legislative systems we were ruled by a, a christian nation for a long long time yes. and it's and it's just one i mean it's just one of the many things that sort of affect us in terms of religious mm. ideology there are many things about hinduism that affect us but when it comes to they guilt do. i think what they we do. are talking about is where we can say where where is this guilt coming in because guilt is not inherently part of uh no. hinduism as such no, but it's, it's not, inherently it's not. part of christianity it yeah. is inherently there you know and we are stepping right. on into some very potentially uh difficult area but i just feel somebody has to speak it out you know when right. when we when we talk about it and when you have a book which talks more about thou shalt not you know which means mm-hmm. that there are more of prohibitions and most of those prohibitions are mm-hmm. aimed at pleasure at pleasure right so a man lying with another man is a pleasure which is a sin right <laughs> abortions abortions are the original sin which you should not now do because well you you had fun when you did it right so now get punished for it and right. substances similarly so it's if you look at it the evolution of mental health the evolution of mental health advocacy we've had to do a lot with uh, unfortunately breaking down the christian guilt in everything right, right. and again i don't mean it with no disrespect yeah, to yeah, religion don't worry you know, about there is, it there is there is i'm sure there is a there is <laughs> there are there are lots of good things which i have learned from them of course from from the religion but uh, this is one of the facts which we need to face you know we have to understand right. what everything comes from punjab again geographically right next to pakistan right next to afghanistan and 99% of the illicit opium in the world is grown in that one country afghanistan you know mm-hmm. the the golden crescent so to speak so afghanistan mm-hmm. acts as the grower of opium iran and pakistan act as the laboratories which refine the opium raw opium into smack and heroin you know and punjab gujarat rajasthan are the porous borders through which it comes into india and mm-hmm. then is transported to the all international destinations from various other ways i'm i'm not an expert on that but this yeah. is how i have right. seen so you're right right it's easy access to um is it's yes. easy access basically which is leading right. to that could be one of the thing and i think as a it as is. a psychologist who has dealt with uh, addictions in therapy obviously i deal with addictions in therapy when i am working with someone like you in conjunction when there is you know medication and that or, is that is always the best combination right if Therapy a psychiatrist is, were to say if the psychiatrist were to say that i can help you quit substances with medicines alone that's not lying. a complete story yeah he's yes. lying <laughs> you know and if a psychologist says that i can get you off substances with zero medical help again that you know would, would be unfortunate and it depends yeah. on where the person is in this ladder of uh, addiction you know because yes. not everything yes. is addiction so let's get to the to the meat of our conversation in terms like sure. how would you define addiction how would you define addiction right. and what are the behavioral levels before which we can say that someone's addicted like so right. how right right so this is very interesting you know the the as i said the entire <laughs> uh, the entire spiel of of addiction you know which now thankfully with the more scientific understanding i i try never to go into that area of judgment it's taken me more than a decade uh, i mean deepak i'll i'll be very honest with you it's taken me more than a decade to be able to completely rid myself of judgment Yeah, right? yeah and and yeah. I, you know it's not easy it's it's unlearning a lot what culture has taught you what society has taught you what even your subject has taught you you know right. i mean even even within our community and you will agree with me that there are yeah. people who are not able to let go of these inherent uh, you know biases <laughs> against somebody who's unfortunately in that condition so we talk about use you know alcohol i say you take your two drinks it's use and i have zero role to play in that you're using alcohol fine 
now that use as soon as you decide that you want to drive home under the influence of these two pegs it becomes abuse right and as soon as you understand and you experience that you are not able to function normally that you need your drink in the morning just to feel normal that is dependence and okay. that's a, that's a, that's a red uh, that's a red flag right. that's where you definitely need help right so i am not against responsible use of something of a substance right i have i know uh, i know that there are substances which are legal which according to our researchers according to a lot of scientific evidence have more harm for the person who's using more harm for the people around that person but those substances are legal and there are substances <laughs> which they are have, the which have they are the tax cash cows absolutely so that's where your question of policy and why policy is not rational why policy mm-hmm. is is and nishant has written that point sugar and i do agree with you nishant you know yeah. sugar is like one of the worst things which we can do to push uh, on our kids and i would just right? like to say dr mukesh other if you could just wait for a little bit and once we get through some of the questions we'll bring you on live as well if you have any questions to ask or anything to add to the conversation if you could just wait for a bit once we go through a few questions and then we'll absolutely be happy to bring you live fantastic yeah. thank you so um yeah, absolutely i i completely understand so i think how i sort of also understand in my therapy sessions when somebody comes and tells me like oh i think i'm addicted so the kind of questions i ask them are around their functionality how much absolutely. of their daily life is being interrupted how much do you think it will be interrupted in a few uh, months or weeks to come I ask the right. question around um do, do you have you done any research on what amount is a healthy amount for you is your body telling you that you wake up with a headache that, that you have to drink you can't sleep without it so how i sort of grade it is use uh dependence compulsion and then addiction so this is how right. i sort of go about the ladder and if this is this something that you sort of agree with do you want to add something to it Hmm. So I do. I mean, I mean, generally I do, right? And definitely, my milestone is also functionality. You know, my my entire thing is this substance which you are taking. Do you need to take it to feel normal? Yes. And that is dependent. So anything above that, anything above that, for me is something which requires an intervention, right? And uh, you know, like like. these this cannabis is is a lot under the focus you know a lot of people talk about it and i'm i'm generally now i i as a as a mental health advocate i can never say that i'm okay with you using something right but i will say that it is definitely the lesser of most evils i will say oh, that it is it is in now. a way you know in a way because as i said you know i i i can i can share researches with you of this british doctor and scientist yeah. who came out with this seminal study on harm to self and harm to others of alcohol and tobacco and cannabis and a lot of other uh, so called narcotics and substances of abuse and the numbers were so shockingly in favor of cannabis being le- less harmful than the other legal drugs that his yeah. career was completely quashed after that because of you know i really like various... one point that you made i hmm. think the point that you've made is hey as a mental health provider i'm not going to say using anything is just amazing just continue doing that no. but what i'm going to say no. is that not every substance is made equal and just because Absolutely. something is natural that doesn't mean it's 100% safe like there are studies no. after studies that tell you that people who use weed to cope with life people who use weed to cope with life have less amount of blood flow to almost every single part of their yes life. Yes, but yes, yes. their harm compared to alcohol is lower, but that doesn't mean they yes. don't have any harm at all. But Agreed. that's not to say that. That's mm. not to say, hey, you should never touch it. You should never. I mean, yes, human beings do all sorts of risky things. But do. do you know where what the risk is regarding your body? 
Because if you think that you can't enjoy a party without drinking, mm -hmm. if you think you can't mm -hmm. enjoy a social event without drinking, if you, that's when I'm like, you are socially dependent. It's a social lubricant for you. You're socially dependent on that. And I see that a lot in Canada, a lot I in agree. the Western world, that yes. there are no parties without alcohol use or without right. except that uh, we we call them weekend benders a lot of people think that mm. they're okay if they are just being alcoholic over the weekend yep so and therein lies the danger therein lies the danger you know because if it is a one in once in a while thing with you there is a higher chance of going overboard with it and and we do see that you know on weekends when the number of uh, fights, arguments, number of traffic violations, number of accidents increases over the weekend in, in the Western world, right? Similar things happen in India during festivals, mm -hmm. right? When people say it's a free for all now. So I'm mm -hmm. going to go overboard on everything. You know, we, we need, uh, I completely agree with that part, knowledge of what substance we are using <clears throat> and responsible uses of that. You know, I, I I do belong to probably that, that small book group of psychiatrists and uh, uh, I would say a little bit of liberal thinkers who would say that actually there is no need to ban anything. The more we ban it, yeah. the more we make it Sports make it group. exciting and, you know, lucrative for people to, uh, you know, right. go out and, and try you're it. You're more and likely to get substances that are not of the good quality. You're more likely to get substances right. that aren't a fit right. and all those. See, for example, the way Portugal sort of dealt with their, uh, and we will come back to Portugal as an example, yep. is that they yep. dealt with their uh, addiction, their war on drugs in a very different way than every other country is doing. So um, uh, let's talk about, and we've already touched on this a little bit, but I want us to talk about what are some of the things that one needs to look out for as signs of being on the path of addiction, that I am, my use has become problematic. What are some of the signs that people, as a sponsor signs, log dek sakte hai ki yaar ye ho raha hai, ab lagta hai kahin na kahin gar baad hai, mujhe thoda sa madad ki zarurat hai. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, as as you might remember, uh, and one of those mnemonics which we used in the alcohol uh, dependence is the CAGE questionnaire, right? So, the CAGE questionnaire is an acronym with four letters, C-A-G-E. So, C being, have you tried to cut down on your alcohol use, you know, by feeling that maybe I'm going over, I need to cut down. Uh, the A is... Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, I'm forgetting it out now. I'm, I'm come back to it. The G is the guilt. Do you feel guilty of using something? You know, and the E was the eye-opening drink, right? Do you need a, a, a shot of alcohol early in the morning just to feel yourself, just to feel normal, right? Uh, C A G E. I have a few psychiatrist friends who are who are right there, and they might help me out with the A part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happens to us all the time, right? So, right. Uh, but so, so these are the basic signs. And I said the the law cut of thumb down. would be. So I just googled it. I just googled it. It's oh, cut good, down, good, good. Well annoyed, cut guilty, down. and eye opener. And eye opener, right? So that is the traditional way of understanding alcohol. But every substance, as you very correctly mentioned, is created different. We have to look at it differently. And so, for me opiates and and uh, synthetic uh, you know amphetamines and things like that would remain do not even try category right because of the danger of them producing physical dependence right uh, cannabis why is it better is because there is no physical dependence per se there's only psychological dependence right opiates now now if you are on the entire group of opiates which right now is sweeping across america which right now is sweeping across most Asian countries and is the biggest cruise, the biggest life taker, you know, because, because you must have heard of it, right? The oxycodone crisis of America, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the fentanyl deaths of America, right? So opiate again, again, why? Because opiates are going to cause physical dependence as soon as you try to cut down on your smack, heroin, uh, tremadol, oxycodone, uh, raw opium, you know, or or what what in Punjab we we have uh, 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 organic in product made out of hai? crushed opium. Inke street, inke street names kya hai? 
Oh, that's very interesting. Of course. So in 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 uh, in uh, Maharashtra in Mumbai, heroin or the brown sugar is called as garad because it looks yeah. like dirt. Garad, right? Mitti, garad. In 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 Punjab, uh, raw heroin is called as chitta, white. Chitta because the it's white, white powder. Chitta. Right, Afim. the white powder. Right. Okay. Afim is is kali nagni. It's it's the black uh, snake, the black enchantress. Right. It looks. It has the consistency of of probably uh, uh, the dhup which we might be using for you know. Uh, for religious rituals and it it looks and uh, feels just like that like like uh, right. google dhoop and then it's called doda. as the Kal- kali nagni the then there is just said, uh, doda doda is also something right doda yes doda doda pukki and uh, is is the powder of the dried uh, bud or from which opium has been extracted the resin so that is the drug of choice in terms of most numbers amongst the you know the the farm hands the agriculture workers of punjab so pukki afim and uh, now chitta those are the scourges of our part of the world you know along with alcohol of course very 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 interesting so what we uh, thank you so much i mean i yeah. really did not know the street names of these because every like the the kind of addiction work that i've done has been largely with the english speaking elite of the uh, of the right, country and right. just, because <clears throat> you live in different indias even while you're living in the same country you you're living in different countries if you're working in a general hospital which is a government hospital you're dealing with a completely different crowd when you're dealing in a private hospital Absolutely. or if you have a private practice of your own it is very very interesting that आप एडिक्शन में कितने लंबे समय तक काम करते हो और आपको रोज कुछ ना कुछ नया सीखने को मिलता है और आप हमेशा सवाल पूछते हो ये पॉपी हस्क क्या होता है ये डोटा क्या होता है I was I was having this discussion with Dr. Atul Ambedkar from the National Drug Dependence Treatment Center and I asked him I said what is the strangest addiction you have seen snake bite Mm. somebody actually used to grab a snake and get himself bitten and would get a high on that mm. you know and and on the streets of delhi the most prevalent is huffing solvents <laughs> right petrol or any volatile liquid most commonly used is the is the correction fluid right uh, and street kids use it as and this will kind of break your heart as a hunger suppressant yes yes they do yes they do right. and the pain as a, as a, on the body hmm. and you you've actually nailed it on the head that most if there is very little that we can say is common between all addictions there's no, one thing yeah. though, there's one thing though that runs across as a thread through almost every addiction is hmm. that it is used as a painkiller it's used as it's something just... that it's used as an emotional painkiller that i'm not able to deal with life that is yes. one universal thread that runs through all the addictions and somebody just said um and i want to name that person they said munish sharma just said certain people are not able to enjoy life and parties without alcohol a lot of it is because of social anxiety when we go there out we it feel is. judged when we have alcohol we are able to quiet down those judgment voices and we are able to enjoy and move our bodies a little and things like that and that's why in india though i love this thing about india most most places where there is high amount of population we are always surrounded by people right yeah. so we are not and since childhood we socialize in places which are temples we socialize in places which are aunty ka ghar nani ka ghar this that and the other and so yeah. frequently that we do not necessarily need alcohol to deal with our relatives i mean and, and trust me some of our indian relatives we need alcohol to deal with them <laughs> <laughs> the i do agree <laughs> the idea is that the two threads that run through all of the addictions one is that it is an emotional pain relief emotional pain yep. relief sometimes even a physical pain relief um yep. the second thread that runs through almost all addiction is that once the addi- once i don't like the word addict but the once somebody is yes. suffering from addiction 
would not be able to remember joy outside of addiction they not right. able to and, remember mm-hmm. and 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 there's a very important reason for that you know the pleasure pathway so nothing tickles the pleasure pathway you know many times we and you will agree with me on this the first experience with a particular substance dictates how the person's rest of life is going to be if the first experience was was you know absolutely out of this world you know it 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 gave you so much pleasure you know so so as as basket like supported he says it's a fight between the hedonic drive the 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 move the the need for pleasuring oneself versus the society's uh, you know rules and laws of this is not right and probably a certain right. amount of rebellion against that exactly. right right a friend and of mine of who course, is actually yeah yeah when we go on go yeah, on go ahead I was and, just going to say course, within the gay community yeah. mm. within the gay community as well within the queer community uh the substance use is higher because the emotional trauma is higher as well the emotional trauma of being judged yeah. and you would see like um lower community uh, like the 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 dalit community you'd see the adivasi community you know they any marginalized community shows mm. as a pattern statistically yeah. higher number of people who are struggling with addictions so one of my friends he right. he is an amazing person uh, amazingly successful lives in bangalore works for an amazing company has done his mba and everything and when i was talking to him and obviously i won't name him but the first time i was talking to him and i was like how did you feel when you took ecstasy for the first time how did you feel when yeah. you took that he's like I have never felt the level of self esteem that I did when I was taking that. Right. And I think that and for the time that it lasted. Yeah. He said that all the and you know it's like he he's shorter in height, he's darker in color. So he's been bullied for that. He's been bullied for being gay, he's been bullied for his height, he's been bullied for his color. So that emotional pain, those subconscious, you know, voices behind you. and this is the therapeutic part of it how do you sort of right deal with those voices not just chemically right 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 so so you are absolutely correct you know there are there is there is and when i was working with the stf uh, the special task force by the punjab police uh, to you know again I, again some amount of frustration i share with you because it is still seen as a law and order problem and not as a health care problem so the police takes the lead on this and they are now forced to educate themselves on the medical part of it you know uh, you know when when the portugal example has clearly demonstrated that it's investing in community investing in positivity is what you need and and let me let me quote this as at 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 uh, the danger of being repetitive but yes the opposite of addiction is not abstinence the opposite of addiction is connection exactly exactly right? it's when you feel so disconnected with everyone you love and everything yes. you love and you feel right. disconnected with joy you feel disconnected and you do not remember feeling that outside of your addiction outside of your yeah. use and it's it is i would i don't want to use the word sad but it is very very problematic for that person it's yes. very um, and, and, and deeper it is the human condition yes. you know some of some of the best psychiatrists i know you know and i respect they say the the best way to understand psychiatry or psychology is to try and understand addiction you know nothing exactly. will teach you more more humanity more humility <laughs> and more you know understanding of the human condition oh. than understanding oh. addiction i right? totally agree with that i have been yeah. a therapist for over 11 years now but i started yeah. dealing with uh clients with struggling with addictions and substance use and even behavioral uh dependencies only 7 yeah. years ago 6 to 7 years ago 3 years into my um um my practice and i realized that oh my god i 
really am able to look at psychology in such a different way it's not the right. same right. let's move on to our next question are some sure. individuals in communities more likely to struggle with uh, a depression and addiction absolutely as i said see i am again you going to use a cliche which i like to use a lot your genes will load the gun and your environment will pull the trigger mm. right so genetically punjabis are more prone and more driven to opiates as a community you know i i many a times i share a photograph which i took of a signboard 600 kilometers away from punjab in out outskirts of gwalior and it's written afim dode pukki ethe vadhiya milde han fresh and good quality opium and you know cannabis uh, sorry not cannabis opium and uh, poppy husk is available here raju that up this i'm talking to 2010 when you know we had not really started the war on addiction in a more uh, uh, at a more national level right but understand why would the choice of language be punjabi out of three languages on that particular board <laughs> they like we know our target market <laughs> um yeah they were like we know our target audience we know whom we're talking to right so <laughs> that's why punjabi sanu pata hai aap kya dal dal kar rahe ho um okay so what are the major substances how people are using in india to would you yeah. like to comment so, on that so there there have been uh, thankfully the national drug dependence uh, treatment center has done uh, surveys on a national level and they have gotten some hard statistics because in india we are very poor at creating reliable data right but it turns out that alcohol remains the number one culprit overall of lost man hours bad relationships people losing lives accidents uh, financial and social cost of addiction maximum number one would be alcohol and mm-hmm. it does not in any way mean and please mark my words it does not in any way we in any way to be misconstrued to mean that prohibition is the answer absolutely not education and compassion is the answer and connection completely that we need to educate people especially politicians and policy makers on the dangers of prohibition i'll share and a statistic rehabilitation with you. program to, uh, rehabilitation programs to have genuine connection absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. you know we we need to address addictions normalize the talk on addictions and give these people connections they are they are not any way different than us of course not it's just that see deepak let's be very honest here when did you try your first cigarette i've never had a cigarette <laughs> and never even yeah, tried one when <laughs> no i actually I think the first time i ever smoked up weed was uh when i was 31 i think oh but that's you were like in a party you were just passing it around i was late to the party i was late to the party you are a late bloomer because in india and especially in punjab the age at which my generation was offered the first cigarette as a sign of rebellion in school i was in class 8 i remember very clearly we went out on a trek me and a close friend of mine we tried a cigarette as our first sign of being you know adults you know <laughs> but the same age right now is the one which is being offered a hard opiate i you you said something really interesting there hmm. i think a lot of and an overwhelming majority of people are struggling with addictions are men yeah right i think somewhere our understanding of masculinity of mardangi or what yes. men need to be like of how they shouldn't talk about their opinion uh, feelings and how this toxic understanding of masculinity that i have to be in charge i have to be the provider i have to be the alpha and i have to be dominant i think that in my experience of 7 years i think it adds to it 100% it adds to it definitely what do you think hmm so 
good observation deepak i think that's excellent and you do you do you know the prototype bollywood hero how he deals with the frustration loss or anything boom boom like he just beats up people right and 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 he walks into the closest bar and picks up a drink yeah yep right that's how men deal with the uh, emotional okay. distress they don't talk to a friend no they don't men don't talk about it they 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 need to be these toxic masculine examples of strong silent prototypes of uh, you know unfeeling stones who just go take a drink when they when it gets okay. too much so we don't right. have really good good models of dealing no, with stress it. dealing with life okay. exactly that जैसे बहुत कम होगा कि अगर आप स्ट्रेस्ड हो तो जाके किसी के साथ बात करो किसी किसी का हाथ पकड़ो किसी से मदद मांगो एक्सरसाइज करो गो आउट फॉर अ रन राइट एक्सैक्टली आई है Yes, turn their lives around completely by using gyms in a way which is just It's it's amazing to see the amount of difference people can make to their lives when they start exercising and I'm not trying to understand again this is toxic ideas of uh, muscles and this that and the other is it toxic yeah. the understanding of activating your body enough to produce serotonin in your body yes right? yes, yes so um we have a qu- question for you which is coming from tanya sachdev the question is how far is this a fact that if you were saved from addiction in your teens and early adulthood you are saved from addictions period yeah okay i i think i get the gist of it it's a very good question and uh, so uh, deepak i think uh, uh, i'll i'll tell you something about uh, the current project i'm doing i'm i'm writing a book of my experiences with addiction in punjab you know a list a, a collection of short stories and and this is one of them this exact thing so this this uh, person in his mid 40s walked into my clinic and said that talk i have a opm dependence and i'm traveling abroad and i would want to get rid of it before i travel abroad you know traveling abroad is a big incentive for people to give up uh, substances in punjab in my part of the yeah canada of course but <laughs> this particular one was going to going to the uk right and canada of course, of course is is, yeah, the, is the, the, two <laughs> different from punjabi <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so he was in his mid 40s and i said okay uh, part of the routine investigation and i'm asking him how long have you taken it and he said uh, doctor 3 years and that was a surprise because people generally do not start on a new substance after 40 usually it doesn't happen you know they they of course there are there are people who would switch from one to the other to the third to the fourth to the fifth right but generally starting a new addiction after 40 is relatively rare right but that is where the role of culture and your the company you keep becomes very important again i am going to say something which is going to offend a few people because the answer i got was doctor sir i had joined the shirmani gurdwara prabandhak committee and he left it at that as if that was by itself a, enough of an explanation as to why he would start opium and again you know i i find that the peer groups which and again right i'm 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 not not trying to pass judgment on it because i'm sure that there were times when every warrior in north india would have to carry opium with him it was the only painkiller known to them yeah and 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 the way to deal with ptsd when you're killing so many things at so many people and you, yeah. you see a lot of the loved ones being killed as well so right. that would be so morphine which is extracted from raw opium is the strongest painkiller known to mankind yeah and at that point in time you you are you have a tough life you have a hard life it was part of your culture and i can say fairly acceptable you know but to in this day and age to not grow up and understand that everything which is good and desirable in opium we have already extracted in the form of medicines there are a million other ways to give your mind pleasure there are you know a thousand other ways to feel good about yourself that that education and that culture that sense of community is missing 
right so what what is if if i think one of that the question was aimed at i think by a concerned parent as to how do i keep my kid off drugs if i put him through this tough part of uh, teenage years is he safe for life i think that was what the answered question yeah, was you know, if your brain's not uh, if your brain's not hijacked by uh, yeah. external chemicals uh, yes. in early on in your life are you more likely to be spared later on the yes. short answer is yes but not yes. really the short answer but is not yes. really yeah but like for example really. i can say this that the some of the hardest work that i find that i'm doing with clients is the work with people who are using substances especially weed and the ones that started yeah. using weed before they were 21 years old yes it's just that that slowness of it all that yes. just like ah oh, i don't i don't feel motivated i do not know what to do and so but right. they started using it after they were 26 27 it's not the same effect because your brain has right. largely formed itself right so boy ye ki kacche bartan pe agar aap nishan daloge to wo zyada that absolutely absolutely so one one uh, young uh, ambitious uh, chap walked into one of my colleagues uh, clinic in in chandigarh dr hardeep he was sharing this he says he comes up with studies and he is using weed and he says doc look at this weed increases neuroplasticity weed does Achha. this weed does that you know a complete argument was ready <laughs> that why i use weed like that these studies are funded by cannabis companies <laughs> possibly you know but at the same time at the same time i said okay you accept all that evidence and tell him that this is what my book says the a motivation syndrome the possibility of getting psychosis you know and show him a couple of patients of cannabis uh, induced psychosis right and tell him that look you are an adult it's your choice i am nobody to moralize you right? and in canada but please, where it is legal yeah, yeah. and in canada yeah. where it's legal we see we we definitely see that after having it legalized it does not become a social legal problem but what it yes. what it remains to be is a psychological problem and, and what a medical problem says, yes and and what the law says is that you are allowed to create problems in your life if you that's what you choose to do we're not going to put right. you in jail you're allowed yes. to share steer your consciousness and and i just want people to know that we're not demonizing substances there are psychological studies going on using trace amount of lsd to figure out how to deal yes. with ptsd but aap apne aap nahi kar sakte ho you can't no. know what no. is a trace amount how much to use when to use it Absolutely. and how to reverse it please do not go on prescribing stuff to yourself this is self medication at the end of the day self medication the pain So um we we're running very close to the time now so I'm I've got two questions yes. to ask you and then we will let sure. one or two people come online if they want to what should someone do once they recognize that they are struggling with substance abuse right so the simple answer is go see a specialist you know the toughest part i usually tell my patient that the toughest part you have already overcome once you're sitting in front of me Thanks, the sir. toughest part the toughest part is understanding that you have a problem and you need a specialist for this if i have a tax issue i don't have a problem going to my ca and saying hey i have a tax issue or i don't know how to calculate my tax why can't we bring the same amount of honesty to our lives that this substance i think is taking over decisions from me i think i am losing control of my life because of the substance and that is the exact time when you go talk to a specialist talk to a good but, but addiction wait psychologist stop that wait na kare jab tak aapko lagta hai ki yaar itna bura nahi itna bura see itna bura. then 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 we deal with the crisis then we deal with uh, so in one of my patients when did i get him into treatment after he had had an almost life threatening accident because he was high on a substance so that is when he decided that and it it was milliseconds here or there you know sure. I, he would never have reached me you don't you know? realize that however resilient our bodies are but life is that fragile that it could Absolutely. go from from alive to not alive within 
a couple of milliseconds we are living in india where around 5 lakh people die every year because of medical negligence so let's just let's just be honest about it that we have to and, and not not just problem, not just problem. not just yeah not not just medical negligence we are also one of the most accident prone countries in the world right so any substance inside your system like people say no alcohol i can drive fine i said i know you can drive fine but that break which you would have applied in 0.5 seconds after alco- after alcohol becomes 0.8 seconds and sometimes that's the difference between life and death i think our right. regard for safety and security is not what we will be written about <laughs> that if someone know. was writing a book on I india know. they would not be like hey india seems to be a very safe and secure nation <laughs> <laughs> no, we, 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 we will we will not be accused of that we will not be no, accused of that no there's no danger being accused of being too careful uh, oh no 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 right? in fact when i'm in uh, when i'm in canada we just having these like, little race jokes here and there like brown people look at themselves as like white people get scared of things so easily and i was like yeah i think we don't get scared of things quite quick and, enough and and tell them that is the difference between their life expectancy and ours exactly exactly thank you very much <laughs> um so so what so the first thing that they should do is go ask for help can they reach out to a psychiatrist or they have to find an addiction counselor first who who should they so, reach out i would say see if it is one of the harder drugs alcohol opiates or something which uh, uh, is known to cause physical dependence and you are going to experience withdrawal symptoms a psychiatrist has to be part of the therapeutic community i always say that addiction management is never a one guy's complete 100% job you know in reality and and uh, and 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 um, uh in 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 all honesty if if a person is to give up addiction he requires a team and the more because when he says a connection aa raha hai yeah okay right and um, and then ha go ahead please no 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 i'm i'm waiting for the third step <laughs> Oh right so so uh first step would be uh build an emotional community of yours people you can talk to honestly about your addiction about your problem right about go to a specialist problem. yes okay. and people who are there for you right your your 2 am friends you know those people you need them you know your your immediate family significant relationships definitely have to be part of it and then definitely please get a good psychologist and a good psychiatrist together either or it would really? become a chicken yeah. and an egg uh, debate you know it's it's really not uh, relevant because a good psychiatrist will automatically have a psychologist on the team a good psychologist would want a psychiatrist on that uh, therapeutic I team i hope right? you're going to be on my team now dr satyan <laughs> we, we, oh i'll be i'll be i'll be <laughs> i'll be pleased of course except that okay. my prescriptions unfortunately don't work in canada <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You you be there for my uh, Indian clients, but you know what? I can be there for your Canadian clients and your Indian. Oh, any day, any day, uh, any day. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I mean this is this is really really interesting. But remember, this is this is the thing that we say within the community of mental health care workers. Is yeah, pills will make you will give you chills, but will not give you skills. they will not give you skills <laughs> how to deal with stuff when you're chill with the you know you'll be chilled for a bit with your pills but you will not know how to deal with life just right. in and of themselves uh, in and of the pills themselves so right. what are the major resources one can reach out to and for when they're struggling with addictions and then we will take one or two people online and then we'll call it a day so uh, deepak i think it is exceptionally important when you are picking up your resource person or your specialist when trying to you know get rid of a substance abuse issue something as serious as that i have seen people giving more importance to the car which they are going to buy than the doctor they are going to go to you know and it it 
always seems cool to me you know why i mean you you many times people will give more importance to the sneakers which they are going to buy you know rather than the the specialist they are going to choose so do your homework always look for peer reviews always look for uh, you know uh, testimonials from past patients and clients you know always look for signs of any red flags always uh, there there's a very simple uh, formula which i have में yeah. पता लग जाएगा कि वो आदमी जजमेंटल है या नहीं है आपको फील कर रहा है या आपको वो गिल्ट फील कर रहा है आपको शेम फील कर रहा है या आपको वो हर्क फील करवा रहा है क्या फील कर रहा है I I totally agree with that. A good doctor is on your side. He's fighting for you. You know, you are not the villain in that story. A good exactly. doctor is is on your team. You know, a good psychologist is there for you. So many a time, and 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 as I told you, Deepak, it took me ten years to get rid of that anger when a patient would come with a relapse. To not blame him, understand that it is his condition. He spent three months. without any substance those were the 3 months when he made connections with his family those were the 3 months when he became more productive with us dr satyam we're taking sure. somebody on in with us now and sure. hopefully we'll be able to join let's yeah. see if they've been able to join or not i've just accepted your request mr medico if you can join in now i think they've decided not to pick up now <laughs> Okay, uh, that's that's okay. That's all. Any, anyone else who wants to join in, this is your last chance before we, uh, before we sort of say bye bye to you. I know these yeah. things like we can continue talking about this till the cows come home. Absolutely. सब सारे जवाब नहीं हो पाते. Let's see. Okay, Tanya Sachdeva yeah. wants to join. So let's see, Tanya. Tanya, I have accepted your request. Okay, there you go, Tanya. Hello. 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 I'm from. Hi, Delhi. Tanya. Hi. Hello, doctors. Uh, I've been listening. Hi, to Tanya. Can you just day. say your uh, Can you Can you just say your name and where you're calling in from? Uh, my name is Tanya Sachdev, and I'm from Delhi, India. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 So nice to be in this chat. Uh, you want me to ask a question? Yes, please. If you have sure. a question or a comment. One. Okay okay so I'll ask a question and I'll comment also right so one question that I want to ask about addictions is that I see around a lot of friends like the doc like uh you know uh, uh I just heard about the, him saying relapse people come to him after 3 months into after a relapse but and I've seen a lot with my friends who are you know are addicted to cigarettes so they will leave for 2 years 3 years even 8 years Suddenly, yep. something will happen, and uh, they will start smoking again. Yeah. And then they will not be able to ever leave it. <clears throat> okay. So what uh, is it that I can tell them that if you've done so well for the last five years, you can okay. do well for the rest of your life as well. Okay, that's that's fantastic, and I think a very important question. and uh, tanya thank you for the question and let me start answering it by a quotation by vincent churchill it's kind of a joke vincent churchill said that quitting smoking is very easy i have done it thousands of times yes the problem with smoking is the easy availability of it you know so whenever you have a friend who has quit for a certain amount of time from any substance instead of telling them that you can do it again ask them what do you think were the main factors during those days when you were able to quit was he exercising better did he have a better quality of relationships was his stress lower than you know usual was he able to create joy in some other ways and recreate those conditions man is a product of his environment so you know i i shared this with my friends and i i have had well i i am i won't say a student but a victim of the indian education system which is exceptionally exceptionally stressful and i have been a smoker off and on all my life the only time when i go off for a very long periods of time are when i am preparing for my long distance runs my marathons or half marathons those are the times when i don't need to quit 
I just don't feel like having cigarettes anymore, and I am off for months and even years. Right? And another thing about cigarettes to keep in mind is that deep le- level of sadness and disgust yep. for yourself will keep you hooked on cigarettes. It, it, there is yes. enough psychological research to say that if you've not dealt with sadness of the past, if you've not de- basically trauma. Okay, trauma. if you've not dealt with trauma, if you've not dealt with disgust that you feel for yourself, you are less likely to be able to quit cigarette for good, and also to understand mm. that relapse is a part of your journey. To 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 look yes. at your life, it would be ideal, of course, to say I will never use this, another substance ever again, or to say mm. I have enough skills that if I ever use a substance again, it would only be for recreational purpose and for a very short period of time, and I'll get back to not using it. That this is that these are two world view, world views. One is absolute yes. substance. The other one is sort of tapering it down, titrating it. So one is titration, one is abstinence, complete abstinence. So this is what I am trying to understand. And both work. We in Canada we have a yeah. lot. Of, I don't. I'm not sure about uh, that about India, but in Canada we have two different, two specific different kinds of, uh, uh, you know, addiction centers, the addiction centers. One is absolute abstinence, yeah. and they're largely religious in nature. The other ones are, uh, you know, what? Let's do harm reduction. Let's do how right. much harm can we? Harm reduction is an absolutely amazing, fantastic, and helpful concept in the addiction to be looked at as like I'm not a total failure if I've relapsed. Yes, yes. So Deepak and these two schools of thought are there within the entire addiction management community worldwide. These are the two schools of thought, and more and more evidence is shifting to the harm reduction one. You know, to 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 quote uh, Amitabh Bachchan from Sharabi, "के कसम मत खाइए, कसमें टूट जाती हैं, कोशिशें कामयाब हो जाती हैं." हाँ, right? कसम मत खाओ, so, कोशिश करो. <laughs> कोशिश करो. That's it. That's it. You know, and and I I take it as a life lesson. It it really works very well. You know, for your friend, just that one compliment that. today you did not smoke after dinner you know you went out for dinner with friends and just this observation that today you did not smoke after dinner and i really like it i think you know that you are strong enough without it and i like you better i i've, I've noticed that i like and you better I, when you I are i love i love i love the compliment yes. you give that i like it and you are making the compliment strength based and not labor yes. based yes. not a compliment should be like hey You're very good today. Oh, so when I do it, I'm not good. So that's not exactly. the compliment. The compliments yes. that we're trying to give is always strength-based compliment. Oh, yes. Today was a good day, eh? So the day was good, yeah. and you were able to show a lot more strength as opposed to yeah, you were good, and you were yes, nice. and right. things like that. That very that that yeah. fine that nuance is important. absolutely absolutely and that's okay. what, what what my struggle is many a times with families i tell the families that you know both the person who's using and the family both of you have a pattern now aap bolna band nahi karte ki sharab chhod do wo kehta hai ye bolte hai isliye main chhodta nahi you get it it's it's a toxic cycle always addiction is never one person's problem it is the community it is the environment around him everybody will need to make those adjustments friends have to create that atmosphere where he feels proud and better of being smoke free create more positive activities right and that is the only way to to work it out addictions need a human touch never a dictator's touch never you cannot you cannot scare somebody out of addictions you yeah. cannot threaten anybody out of addictions but positivity we underestimate the power of love we underestimate you know and this is what i have discovered over time invest faith in the person say you know today i liked it better and that much is many a times enough many a times oh. very powerful sakhir jab tum bolte ho i can see the passion i can see the compassion <laughs> in your work it's brilliant it's so yeah. good 
So, so Dr. Satyan, do you also recommend something like a family therapy? I think the whole family should come for the counseling. Always. 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 Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Always, without exception. Always, Absolutely. without exception. क्योंकि देखो जो उसके फैमिली वाले हैं उनको भी तो सपोर्ट की जरूरत है ना ऐसा तो नहीं कि हम लोग सब पैदा होते हैं विद स्किल्स टू डील विद पीपल स्ट्रगलिंग विद एडिक्शन राइट सो वी वी नीड दैट एंड एंड इन पंजाब एट द सेम टाइम यू नो इन पंजाब मेनी टाइम्स पेरेंट्स कम टू मी एंड से डॉक्टर साहब ये नशा नहीं छोड़ता इसकी शादी करवा दे कि आप ऐसी लड़की ढूंढोगे जिसने डीएडिक्शन का कोर्स किया हुआ है आई मीन व्हाई इज इट दैट पुअर गर्ल्स जॉब टू हेल्प द गाय कम आउट ऑफ एडिक्शन माय 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 सबमिशन इज फर्स्ट वर्क ऑन योर फैमिली डायनेमिक्स लेट हिम बी सब्सटेंस फ्री then we talk marriage marriage is not the solution to addiction and you know in a teaching say for example teaching some of the things like what is tough love what is uh, positive yeah. pity what these yes. concepts are new these yeah. are not the concepts. like pity me dikha rahe ho to aise nahi are tu to kitna bechara hai tere to no no that oh, no. positive pity yeah. is when you're showing that how hard are your circumstances i completely understand this must be very difficult for you and i see that you're trying i see that you this is positive pity this is not like That's one of those oh तू तो है ही तू तो बेचारा गरीब का बच्चा था तेरे साथ ऐसा हो नहीं था टाइप सो नॉट दैट वो दया नहीं दिखानी कंपैशन बट something more something you know something was stronger than the lust for getting into these activities right. so you are my sorry the other reason why women are less likely i'm not saying women don't struggle with addictions of course they do but they're less likely to struggle because they're relational they talk to people they express yeah. their feelings they have a support system they always have friends no, always they more likely to have friends to go and talk to right they're able to cry they're allowed but what we do is we force men to be harder to be yeah. to be yeah. stronger to be dominant from very ch- like boys are not touched and hugged after they're 11 they're forced yes. yeah. to be fending for themselves and stuff like that so that's very interesting as well yeah. and the question okay. of masculinity doesn't come here right i mean if i don't drink nobody will challenge my you know my core my existence no, but it's for not. men you know usually the point mm, is yes. the masculinity comes into effect you know women are in fact exactly. saved also sometimes if they don't want to great thank you so much i leave now you're welcome you're most welcome thank, thank you very much for joining us Thank you Tanya. Bye bye. Okay. Our bye. next guest uh, our next guest unfortunately will have to be our last guest. So please uh tell us your name. Oh, they've gone. Sachin's gone. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess we don't have any more time uh for any more questions but uh Sachin let's do this again, eh? Let's not this sure. be the last time. But this time this yeah. time uh Deepak I think uh, now that we have seen the amount of interest and the amount of you've seen my passion as it comes out i think let's uh, <laughs> next time we'll 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 choose a more uh, a discreet topic within the broad umbrella of umbrella of addiction addiction and, and we should do it again we should i agree do it again i agree with you yay thank you very much i really appreciate your uh, <laughs> i really appreciate your uh, Okay. Thank you very much Dr. Satyan. I really really wish you have a lovely evening and we'll connect with you again. And I'm definitely pres- uh, sending some of my clients your way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad to help in any way I can Deepak. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.